All right, what's going on dudes and welcome back to another one of those video things I do when a new Minecraft snapshot has been released. This time we got a whole bunch of new command block stuff, but we're gonna start off with what I have in front of me because I don't want the witch to despawn. So, new addition, when villagers get struck by lightning, they turn into a witch. Now unfortunately, I don't actually have the power to summon lightning at will without a mod installed, but to account for that, I have prepared dramatic narration to detail the process of what takes place when a villager is actually struck by lightning. In a world where this poor, hapless villager is walking along and Zeus decides to smite him with a lightning bolt, he undergoes a metamorphosis the likes of which have never been seen before but are detailed eloquently by the sign, at the end of which the villager has turned into a witch. And now you understand exactly what happens and you didn't even need to actually see the villager get struck by lightning. It's pretty amazing. Anyway, all right, let's move along to the command block stuff. Although, on the way there, on the topic of villagers and villages, the villagers have decided to improve their construction system, and they now put their gravel roads on top of cobblestone, so much more stability there. <laughs> okay, anyway, so let's get on to the fill command. This is basically the first of two world edit style commands that were added in this week's snapshot. This one, as you can guess by the name, allows you to fill an area with a certain type of block. So in this case, the way I've actually gone and made this big pit here is I've used the fill command to fill a section with air. I replaced the, the blocks that were there before, and now it's just a pit. So the syntax is slash fill, and then the first three numbers here are relative coordinates because I'm using that tilde. You can also use absolute coordinates if you wish that you can find by hitting F3. It's totally up to you, um, but I've created the first corner of my bounding box right here, and that's the first three coordinates here. And then I've created the second corner of my bounding box, another 15, uh, negative five down, and 10 over here in the X, Y, and Z directions. And then I've specified that I want to fill that bounding box with air. Now, obviously, if I run this right now, it's not going to do anything because it's already filled with air. But if I switch it to, I don't know, stone, I can fill the entire thing with stone. Cool. Now, there is actually a cap as to how many blocks you can change at once. There's a limit of 5,000 at the moment, which it may seem like a lot. It's actually not at all. Hopefully that'll be raised at some point sooner. Hopefully you can actually specify what you'd like the cap to be in, in a config file or something. It's obviously like that in order to prevent lag. Um, but most computers can handle over a 5,000 block change because it's actually a pretty small area. So anyway, I just filled it with water. Alternatively, I don't know, we could fill it with lava and run it again. And that just nice. <laughs> Turn it all into obsidian because I actually wouldn't have expected that to happen. But, okay, now we can run the command again that should just change it to lava. There we go. All right, cool. So that is the fill command. Pretty straightforward. Now we'll move on into the clone command, which is the second of the two world edit style commands that have been added. Syntax here is just three sets of coordinates. The first two sets, so this three here, selects the first bounding box, or the first corner of the bounding box, these three following it, select the second corner of the bounding box, and then the next three, select the uh, the starting point at which you actually paste the, the section that you're cloning within the bounding box. So right here, once again, using relative coordinates, but absolute coordinates work as well. Um, I'm starting the bounding box at the center of our command block, and then I'm moving it eight, uh, eight in the x direction, negative two in the y direction, and 12 in the z direction, and I'm gonna paste that uh, three, three blocks up in the y direction, so. Exit out of there, boom, press that, and all of a sudden we've duplicated our little farm thing here. And if I press it again, because it actually stores the uh, the command in the block that's copied, what do you know, we have another one up above. And we can keep doing that. And there's actually a way you can automate this so that it creates an infinite loop of cloning and pasting and cloning and pasting, et cetera, et cetera. Probably not that good for your computer to do. If you started it going off in the X and Y directions, it would, it well, be an infinite loop, which uh, is something you generally want to avoid in programming. But anyway, if that's something you want to do, feel free. Self-propagating structures um, are there <laughs> if you would like to, to build one. Uh, okay, so next up, we have this uh, interesting little thing here, which is I've gone and actually specified 
a bounding box where if I step inside it, I will be teleported. So it's actually similar to, uh, I, I think, what, uh, what the code uses in order to teleport you around when you walk into a particular location, except now you're actually able to create a, a three-dimensional bounding box when I guess you weren't able to do that before. So the syntax for that, or what I've used here is slash TP at P, and then in brackets here I've specified that I want this bounding box to, uh, to start at X equals 117, Y equals 64, and Z equals 316, which is just about the location of this command block here. And then the dx, dy, and dz, sounds like we're in calculus, but we're not really. It's just the delta x, delta y, and, and delta z as far as how far off in each direction you would like the, the bounding box to extend to. So this time it's just 15 blocks in the x direction, one up and down the y direction, and four uh, in the z direction from this initial starting point. You could also, it seems like you would also be able to set up the, the clone command this way. The syntax doesn't work for it, but it seems like it would be an alternative method if they implemented it uh, to select a, a bounding box or even, even for the fill command as well. But anyway, so if I step inside of that bounding box, if my at P fits that criteria, it'll teleport me to the coordinates I've specified here, which are up here. So I went and made a little parkour course where, oh no, we fell and we're sent back to the beginning. Kind of cool. Um, yeah, so oh no, I fell again, and set back to the beginning. But if we make it all the way, and then we jump off at the end, hey, we're safe, yeah, we, we got over the, the lava floor, and oh no, we walked back onto it, and now we're off again. So, uh, and, <laughs> whoops, keep falling on, because I think it extends half a block over here, since it starts at the, uh, the center of that command block. Um, so that's that. Just a cool little, uh, way to select an area and perform an action on, on something in there. Alternatively, if we wanted to, uh, we could do slash tp at e, uh, or lowercase e, type equals uh, pig, I think. Is it capitalized or not? I, I don't really know, comma. I'm hoping that this works. And then if I go into here and get a pig and spawn the pig, hopefully he will be teleported up. Yay, there we go. What's up? <laughs> yeah, so that works. All right. So the at E is just a, another another way to select an entity inside of that bounding box as well. Cool, cool. All right. So next up, uh, we have a, a new little feature with teleportation. So right here, I have a command that uh, it slash it teleports the the closest player to right now do nothing. But you'll notice I actually have five tildes in there. The first are the the relative coordinates, but then the next two are actually a, a new little uh, flag that you can put in for rotation. So if I want to uh, rotate myself, um, I don't know, let's say 30 degrees, right? I can do this, click the button, and click the button, and now I've been rotated. Kind of cool. So if you want to make sure you're orienting a player in the, in the proper direction when you teleport them, now you can do that. Now, interestingly enough, you can cause, uh, you can make a little clock here, and I can just start rotating myself around, so I'm going to do that really quickly, if possible. It's going to be a little bit obnoxious. Actually, let me uh, exit this first, so it's not going to move me when I set up the clock, otherwise there's no way I'm even going to get this going at all. Okay, there we go. Now I'll change the commands. I have to set myself uh, a little bit of an offset in the Y direction, or else it's going to stick me in the ground. And then I can do 30 degrees. And here we go. Whee! I'm gonna start spinning. No hands. I don't have a webcam on this one, but I promise you, I'm not touching anything. But you can see the the feed going on in the in the chat. So yeah, kind of cool. Just another thing that. Well, I don't know. I could see this being used in the code just to be really obnoxious. Um, when you're trying to do a puzzle, it just keeps rotating you around over and over. Um, anyway, so let me stop. Stop it. Change the command back, and uh, there we go. Okay, so now let me go ahead and, and stop this clock, and uh, that way the, the chat will go away. And we'll get on to uh, the final feature. There's actually a, a pretty cool one. Um, it's in the menu here. We can see it, or actually, let me go into F5 mode. Um, <laughs> you can see my skin looks quite strange. One arm is bigger than the other. Half of it is the hero from Take Back the Night. Half of it is my usual skin. Um, if we go into our options, skin customization, what we have here is a bunch of different options that we can now enable or disable. And it's basically, um, think of it as a, a hat, what you've been able to do on your head with creating sort of a layer outside of the, uh, the inner polygon. But you can do that all over your entire character now. 
So if I disable everything off, uh, or we want the hat on actually, we want the jacket off, the right sleeve off, done, exit. Now we look normal except for the, the leg down there because I accidentally altered my, my base skin in messing around with this. Um, but my lopsided arm and my lopsided body jacket are gone. Uh, but if I go back in, then I can go ahead and uh, enable everything and escape once again. <laughs> and now I just look like a super macho version of my usual skin. Uh, but it's just a, it's a new skin customization thing. It reads the, the, the file is 64 by 64 rather than uh, 64 by 32. So you just get that extra space to uh, give yourself some some jacket options and sleeves and, and leggings and, and whatnot that you can make look however you please. Um, I believe that armor still looks the same when you wear it. Let me check really quickly. Um, but if you obviously make, um, if you make part of these, uh, the, the extra layer transparent, you should be able to make it almost look like you have armor, which is kind of cool. Um, <laughs> so armor still looks pretty much the same. It's just that there's a little bit less of a, let's see, a little bit less of a bounding in between your, uh, your jacket and the armor as opposed to your regular skin, the armor, but yeah, that's it. All right. So that concludes this snapshot. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed, a rating would be much appreciated. Other than that, uh, I will see you next time.